dawn over the mouth of the Rio Atabapo. Beautiful. How we got to this point? Kawa. Ted's Fish Room presents Columbia 2016 Sponsored by Amazonas Magazine Rapashi Superfoods and SwissTropicals.com Our first full day in Puerto Inarita started with some collecting on the Cano Vatina where we found a lot of interesting fish. We already found out that this little village on the Cano Vatina is the party destination on the weekends. I took the time to check out this party deck. One of my many hobbies is outdoor cooking and I was immediately drawn to this interesting camp stove at the back end of the covered deck. This simple stove is a raised wooden box with a piece of sheet metal bent for a firebox and a cooktop. The wood is protected by a layer of clay under and around the firebox. Burning wood produces the heat inside the firebox and then pots and pans on top of the cooktop can be heated. There is even an aluminum chimney to get rid of the smoke. This stove is a great example of jungle engineering. Once fish are collected, the work begins. These fish were bagged on the stream and then transported back to Puerto Inarita to a holding facility where they will be cared for while we are out on the river for the rest of the week. The fish are inspected and then reoxygenated, but they're going to stay in the bags and have their water and oxygen changed on a daily basis. They will not be tanked until they are sent to Bogota. Once the fish are taken care of, we gather up all our gear and head down to the port to load up the boats and get on the river. Actually, we pile up all of our gear and wait for the chance to get to the boats in order to maybe load them up and hopefully get on the river at some point today. Eventually, a gap on the ramp opens up, we can slip our boat in and start to load it with all our gear. No gas stations out on the river, so we have to carry all of our fuel with us. Once the heavy fuel is loaded, we have to play Tetris to get all of our gear and five people onto this boat. The last bit of cargo to load are the tourists. And then we are finally on our way, about four hours after we expected to be. Our goal today is to make it to a camping spot on the Rio Atabapo before it gets dark. But ahead of us, the skies are getting cloudy. And just like that, we're in a storm. Thunder, lightning, wind, heavy rain, and the river becomes so choppy it's too dangerous for the boats and we have to pull over to the side to wait it out. This is a dangerous situation. If we sit here too long, it's going to turn dark, and navigating the rivers in the dark is not an easy or safe thing to do. We are stuck. Until this storm passes, we can't go on to the Rio Atabapo or back to Puerto Inarita. We are in a situation where we may be stuck along the side of the river all night long. Rapashi Superfoods combines superior nutrition and ingredient quality in a gel food that fish like to eat. From staple diets to specialty feeds, there is a Rapashi Superfood formula that will benefit every fish in your aquarium. And the long-lasting gel allows fish to feed naturally on a food source that will stay in the water for many hours. Rapashi Superfoods are available from dependable retailers that specialize in high-quality aquarium and reptile products. For more information, visit the Rapashi Superfood website at www.rapashi.com. Amazonas, the world's favorite aquarium magazine. Amazonas is one of the world's legendary tropical fish publications, read by tens of thousands of enthusiasts who are passionate about keeping fascinating and thriving freshwater aquariums. Every issue brings rare fish husbandry and breeding, world-class aquarium systems, freshwater aquarium advice, and thought-provoking news and much, much more. Stay inspired, stay informed, and stay connected to the world's most passionate aquarium keepers. Subscribe to the world's favorite aquarium magazine, Amazonas.
So we were a little bored sitting here trying to outweigh the storm and this uh, silver dollar was nice enough to jump into the boat and give us some entertainment. <laughs> After about an hour the storm passes and we decide to continue on up towards the Rio Atabapo. But we lost the bet and long before we reach the mouth of the Rio Batabapo, darkness falls and we are forced to pull over at a village and try to find a place to sleep. This is the village of Montavini. It is right at the border of Venezuela and Colombia where the Rio Atabapo, Rio Aviare, and Rio Orinoco come together. Now the challenge is to find a place in town that can house us for the night. Eventually we find a local hotelier with a building and plenty of space. Looks like we'll be sleeping in a bed after all. Our luxury accommodations include a piece of foam on a cot with what seems to be a clean sheet, two blankets, a mosquito net, rustic clapboard walls, a light, and a door that can be locked, but only from the outside. Security is provided by a ferocious guard dog and a very large toad. After a not too uncomfortable night, we wake up to find that the hotel's front porch has the best view in town. This is the mouth of the Rio Atabapo at dawn. <laughs> That's still beautiful. We also get a chance to explore all the amenities of our one quarter star accommodations. The back porch is on the 50 yard line of the local football pitch. The hotel has one shower for everyone to share, but we all decide that we are not dirty enough yet for a shower. We find an enjoyable breakfast of local coffee and some bread at the diner next door, and then we make our way back down to the river boats to be on our way. The black water of the Rio Atabapo is smooth as glass this morning. Water is high, still in flood stage. This is an abandoned Colombian naval station. A few kilometers upstream from the confluence, we come to a white sand beach beside a large rock in the river. This was our destination yesterday, and we stop now to establish our camp. The rock is a part of the ancient Guyana Shield, a rock formation that covers most of the northern end of South America. It is very rough and will tear up your feet if you try to walk barefoot over it. While the camp is being set up, we explore the immediate area around our campsite, and it does not take long to find fish. This is Hemoloricaria formosus, a small whiptail catfish that we find hundreds of. The water is high, which will make catching fish more difficult, but it also means that the water is relatively clear. In a few months, the decaying plants like these will release so much tannin that the water will be so black that you can't see through it. It will be easier to catch fish because the water will be lower, but I would not be able to make underwater videos like these. We will have plenty of opportunity to look for fish around the campsite later in the day. So once all the camping gear is off the boat, we climb back in and take off to explore the Rio Atabapo. Our first destination, the Cano Vatina, the same stream we explored yesterday, but much closer to the big river. Don't miss an episode of Columbia 2016. Please subscribe to my channel and help spread the word by sharing this video with your friends. Thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room, and please check out my sponsors for this series, Rapashi Superfoods, SwissTropicals.com, and Amazonas Magazine.